at the end of this video, you should be able to explain how the sun converts matter into energy in its core. Chapter 29, Section 1, Structure of the Sun Throughout much of human history, people thought that the sun's energy came from fire. People knew that burning a piece of coal or wood produced heat and light. They assumed that the sun, too, burned some type of fuel to produce its energy. But less than 100 years ago, scientists discovered that the source of the sun's energy is quite different from fire. The Sun's Energy The sun appears to the unaided eye as a dazzling, brilliant ball that has no distinct features. Because the sun's brightness can damage your eyes if you look directly at the sun, Astronomers look at the sun only through special filters. Astronomers also use other specialized scientific instruments to study the sun. Composition of the sun Scientists break up the sun's light into a spectrum, the plural being spectra, by using a device called a spectrograph. Dark lines form in the spectra of stars when gases in the star's outer layers absorb specific wavelengths of the light that passes through the layers. The temperature of these outer layers determines which gases produce visible spectral lines. By studying the spectrum of a star, scientists can determine the amounts of elements that are present in a star's atmosphere. They can also deduce the temperature, density, and pressure of the gas. Because each element produces a unique pattern of spectral lines, astronomers can match the spectral lines of starlight to those of Earth's elements, as is shown on the screen here, and identify the elements in the star's atmosphere. Both hydrogen and helium occur in the sun. About 75% of the sun's mass is hydrogen, and hydrogen and helium together make up about 99% of the sun's mass. The sun's spectrum reveals that the sun contains traces of almost all other chemical elements. Nuclear fusion A powerful atomic process known as nuclear fusion occurs inside the sun. Nuclear fusion is the process of combining nuclei of small atoms to form more massive nuclei. Fusion releases huge amounts of energy. Nuclei of hydrogen atoms are the primary fuel for the sun's fusion. A hydrogen atom, the simplest of all atoms, commonly consists of only one electron and one proton. Inside the sun, however, electrons are stripped from the protons by the sun's intense heat. Nuclear fusion produces most of the sun's energy and consists of three steps, as is shown on the screen here. In the first step, two hydrogen nuclei, or protons, collide and fuse. In this step, the positive charge of one of the protons is neutralized as that proton emits a particle called a positron. As a result, the proton becomes a neutron and changes the original two protons into a proton-neutron pair. In the second step, Another proton combines with this proton-neutron pair to produce a nucleus made up of two protons and one neutron. In the third step, two nuclei made up of two protons and one neutron collide and fuse. As this fusion happens, two protons are released. The remaining two protons and two neutrons are fused together and form a helium nucleus. During each step of the reaction, energy is released. The Final Product One of the final products of the fusion of hydrogen in the sun is always a helium nucleus. The helium nucleus has about 0.7% less mass than the hydrogen nuclei that combined to form it do. The lost mass is converted into energy during the series of fusion reactions that forms helium. The energy released during the three steps of nuclear fusion causes the sun to shine and gives the sun its high temperature.
When light nuclei collide, they can undergo fusion reactions and release energy. Fusion reactions make heavier nuclei from lighter nuclei. When four hydrogen nuclei combine, they can form a helium nucleus. Since two of the protons have turned into neutrons, other particles must be produced that will balance the charge. These particles are called positrons. Fusion is the principal reaction that causes the sun to give off light and heat. It releases even more energy per gram of fuel than nuclear fission, and its waste products, primarily helium gas, are relatively harmless. Fusion, however, is not used to produce electricity today. Temperatures over 100,000 degrees Celsius are required for fusion to occur. Mass changing into energy. The sun's energy comes from fusion, and the mass that is lost during fusion becomes energy. In 1905, the physicist Albert Einstein, then an unknown patent office worker, proposed that a small amount of matter yields a large amount of energy. At the time, the existence of nuclear fusion was unknown. In fact, scientists had not yet discovered the nucleus of the atom. Einstein's proposal was part of his special theory of relativity. This theory included the equation E is equal to mc squared. In this equation, E represents energy produced, M represents mass, or the amount of matter, that is changed, and C represents the speed of light, which is about 300,000 kilometers per second. Einstein's equation can be used to calculate the amount of energy produced from a given amount of matter. By using Einstein's equation, astronomers were able to explain the huge quantities of energy produced by the sun. The sun changes more than 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium every second. Yet, this amount of hydrogen is small compared with the total mass of hydrogen in the sun. During fusion, a type of subatomic particle called a neutrino is given off. Neutrinos escape the sun and reach Earth in about 8 minutes. Studies of these particles indicate that the sun is fueled by the fusion of hydrogen into helium. One apparatus that collects these particles is shown on the screen here. Elements other than hydrogen can fuse too. In stars that are hotter than the sun, energy is produced by fusion reactions of the nuclei of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. At this point, you should be able to explain how the sun converts matter into energy in its core.